This is a burnt bone with a story. A while back, we were invited to a dinner party where a slightly charred bone was on the menu. Don't ask, it's crazy traditions. So we put a bone in our toaster oven and then promptly forgot about it and went to the party. We came back to a smoky mess. This whole room was filled with the smoke. Uh, but we did get a burnt bone for future use out of the deal. Uh, but that inspired me to put together um, an air quality monitor so that we, so the house could alert us when things don't smell right. For example, if someone's cooking on the stove and didn't turn the range hood on for ventilation. Uh, so I put together five sensor-laden Wi-Fi enabled Arduino boards and scattered them around inside and outside the house. One of them is hiding over here in the, this plant in the corner. I'll show it to you. Uh, it's guarded by our friendly bear and uh, gorilla. So it is, uh, this is an Arduino Yun board. It has a Wi-Fi card built into it. You can see a memory card there for logging. Then the second board here is a shield that allows for plugging in sensors um, using these Grove cables. So there's no soldering or wire hacking required. And then here we have a uh, digital light sensor, if I could focus on it, um, that um, gives high accuracy, high range light sensor readings. And this is a combined uh, high accuracy temperature and humidity sensor. These sensors are all about $10. The board's the most expensive thing, it's about $70 and the shield's about $10. Most interesting board here is about $15. This is a dust sensor. And this metal um, section here is a, f a photodiode uh, light detector. In front of that, right about here, is a lens that focuses the light detection area to right to a point right about there, which is in front of an LED that um, shines on the air right in front of it. Finally, there's a resistor at the bottom here that heats up the air slightly so that it circulates between these vents. So whatever dust is in the air is scattered by that LED, focused by that lens, and detected by that um, detector. And all of that, all these sensors are then gathered once a minute by the Arduino board and loaded up to a uh, cloud. Wild plants attacking me. Um, to uh, the free XIV cloud service. So I'll show you that next. So over here you can see the xlively.com plots of the sensor data that we collect. Here's the indoor dust sensor for a typical day. We can change these to monthly readings um, or hourly readings. We can scroll back and forth to view past data. Here's the humidity sensor, here's the light sensor, here's the temperature sensor. Um, we have three sets of sensors upstairs, downstairs, outside. Here's a down, outside dust sensor for a week, uh, showing some variation. Unfortunately, it's not quite as accurate as I had hoped. I uh, was hoping we'd be able to get a better reading of the temperature inversion that we get here in the Salt Lake Valley. It's where the pollution gets trapped uh, from uh, air coming off the mountains versus air rising up off the ground. Um, uh, but the sensor is can give us kind of a rough reading of that, but not a real accurate reading. Uh, hopefully some new sensors that come along, we can just plug them into the existing Arduinos and, and uh, improve that. So this house uh, is really benefits from being able to automate things based on more accurate temperature readings. Um, it's, you know, it used to be a, a simple rambler that was built in the 50s, um, but a guy bought it and rebuilt it in the 80s, and popped the roof off, made it one large room, and most notably he built the whole entire south wall out of windows for this wonderful view. We got the Wasatch Mountains over there, the Salt Lake Valley, the um, Ochre Mountains over there, and the Great Salt Lake over there. Uh, but that, the challenge for that is to manage the temperature variation you get with all that light coming in. In the summer, the trick is to use uh, the curtains. Um, I have those wired up. I demoed this in a previous video. Close curtain one and two. 
So we can uh, control the curtains by voice or by manual controls or by automation. Uh, we also control the fans, the furnace fans, that ceiling fan, there's an exhaust fan over there. Um, all of that monitors the indoor upstairs, downstairs temperature and makes uh, hopefully intelligent decisions on how to ventilate. Uh, now, the, of course, the big plus advantage of all these windows is free heat in the winter, like now. Uh, but that's a little tricky because the temperature variation is quite large. So that passive solar heat gain, um, I'll, may I'll talk about that in uh, next month's video because that uh, needs a little more detail. But I'll give you a teaser that I hope to mitigate that uh, temperature variation by adding a 10 foot high, five and a half ton water wall right here. I've, I've ordered some some pipes for that. Hopefully they'll get here within a month and I'll show you that next month. That or I'll have an unmitigated disaster and I'll show you a wet basement. Either way, tune in, we'll see you then.